Yeah. So our next presentation is by uh, Bing Bing Ling and her colleagues, her group, presenting a topic on multi granular geo visualizations of um, public perceptions of COVID 19 through the lens of Twitter. And their group are based in Texas AM University. Yes, Bing Bing. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. I want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, so you can show that in 15 minutes. Yeah, okay. thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah, so everyone has 15 minutes for presentation and five minutes for questions. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm revealing currently I'm a PhD student in Texas AM University, and uh, very thanks so much for in um give me this opportunity to share my research and also thanks very much for organizing this very important and interesting session. Uh, today I would like to share this research, which is under the guidance of Professor Lazo and cooperate with other colleagues of them come from Texas AM University. The topic I want to introduce today is the visualizations of demographic disparities of public sentiment toward COVID-19 um, through the social media. WHO announced that COVID-19 pandemic triggers 25 percentage increase in prevalence of anxiety and uh, depression worldwide in 2020. Similar phenomenon was also observed in the United States. Therefore, there is a need to uh, track the public sentiment toward COVID-19 in the United States. And during the physical travel restriction of the pandemic, it's hard to take a survey to track the human responses toward COVID-19. However, the social media, such as the Twitter, provides the online platform enabling residents to share their um, feelings about COVID-19. Such as the um, Twitter example here, this user tweets that uh, she hasn't seen her boyfriend since due to COVID-19 with a crying order. Based on the tweets like that, we can evaluate the sentiment of the Twitter user. However, we all know that the Twitter data are biased towards younger, well-educated and wiser population living in urban communities. It means that if we don't consider the overlying demographic virus of Twitter data, the sentiment analysis will overlooked the certain uh, the stress of certain social groups such as the older generation and finally will lead to the unfair estimation. Therefore, in my research, I need to answer these two research questions. The first question is what are the geographical and the demographic disparities of public sentiment toward COVID-19 reflect on social media? And the second question is how can we alleviate the demographic bias within social media to fairly evaluate public sentiment towards specific terms or during hazardous events such as the COVID-19? The main data I use in this research is Twitter data. I collect about 5 million COVID-19 related tweets from public users in 2020 and 2021. And you can see that the main attributes of Twitter data uh, used in this research includes the uh, tweet contents, location information, time tag, and the user information. Here is the workflow of this study. Uh, there are three main steps in this study. The first step is the Twitter data mining for sentiment evaluation based on the tweet content. And the second step is demographic detection of Twitter users based on their user information. The final step is the um, demographic disparities of sentiment analysis and the index adjustment. In the end, we proposed this uh, index called sentiment adjusted by demographics index. And uh, we call this Z index to represent uh, the um, negativity of Twitter users. And um, this is the detailed method for the uh, work workflow, such as in the uh, first step to the mining for sentiment evaluation, I use this uh, bigger method to evaluate the sentiment of each tweet. 
it gives us a score range um, ranging from minus one to one, representing the most negative to the most po positive. Then we can um, evaluate the negativity of Twitter user. In the second step, the demographic detection of Twitter users, I applied the M3 model from this paper. Uh, this M3 model will uh, detect the age and the gender of Twitter users. And the age was divided to three categories, uh, to four categories, and the gender included the male of the female. In the last step, the demographic disparities of sentiment and index adjustments. Uh, for the set index calculation, there are two main steps to calculate this index. First, we calculate the weight to measure the difference between the percentage of a certain social group among the population and the Twitter users. Secondly, we uh, use this weight to adjust the percentage of negative users and the percentage of all users in different social groups. Finally, we got the set index. And again, set index representing the uh, adjusted percentage of negative Twitter users. I have introduced all the background information and the methodology. Let's go to the results part. And the first part of results is about geographic and the demographic disparities of public sentiments. This figure shows the percentage of negative, uh, of negative, uh, neutral, and the positive Twitter users in eight social groups in the US. From this figure, we can see that the shape of octagon, octagons uh, are irregular. It means that the sentiment varies among different social groups. And secondly, I use this red font to highlight that the female Twitter users under or equal the age of 18 somewhere to the highest percentage of negative sentiment, and it's about 35 percentage. This result is in line with the results from the psychological research. This says that the female or the younger generation are more sensitive to the less disturbance caused by the pandemic and uh, suffer a high level of uh, anxiety and stress toward COVID-19. This figure shows the temporal trends of the percentage of negative to the users in different ages and the gender social groups in the US. We can also see that the female line and the age under or equal to 18 years old this line these two lines show the highest percentage of negative Twitter users. This figure shows the percentages of negative Twitter users toward COVID-19 in different social groups at the state level in the US in 2020 and 2021. It was, it was mentioning that the highest percentage of negative uh, users was observed in Wyoming in female and age under or equal to 18 years old. And the lowest percentage of negative users was observed in Vermont uh, in the male and the age larger or equal to 19 years old and, all, and under or equal to 29 years old. Here is a heat map showing the monthly percentage of negative Twitter users toward COVID-19 in different social groups in four most populous states, so California, Texas, Florida, and New York. There are three interesting patterns I want to introduce in this figure. Firstly, also the female and the age under or equal to 18 years old. We can see that this social group suffered a long-term um, negative emo emotion during almost all the pandemic. And the secondly, we can see that most social groups um, in these four states suffered a high level of negativity in the first beginning two months of the pandemic. And the last interesting is this point. We can see that in Florida, 
a female and the age of uh, larger than or equal to 13 years old should also show the high level of uh, negativity. So that can be explained by two reasons. The first reason is that a new round of COVID-19 broke out in Florida in September 2021. And another reason is that uh, the older generation in Florida showed the highest death rate in this period compared to other states. Let's go to the second part of the results, the sentiment adjusted by demographics, the study index. Um, firstly, this is the figure shows the proportions of different social groups at the national level among the uh, Twitter users and uh, the population. Um, we can see that the demographic bias existed in this figure. The biggest difference between the Twitter users and the population is in this uh, social group. The so female and the age larger or equal than to 14 years old. Is about 25 percentage among population and less than 10 percentage in Twitter users. It confirms that we need to consider the demographic bias of Twitter if we do any Twitter data mining. In this figure, the top, the top uh, subplot shows the national temporal trend of the number of Twitter users tweeting about COVID-19, and the a uh, bottom support shows the low percentages and the, the adjusted percentages of users with the positive, neutral, and the positive, neutral, and the negative sentiments toward COVID-19 in the US in 2020 and 2021. From the bottom support, we can see that the adjusted percentage line is similar with the low percentage line. It means that at the national level, the demographic bias is not a big issue when you do the sentiment analysis. However, this is, these two pictures show the result at the state level. And the left figure shows the comparison of original percentage of negative trade users toward COVID-19 and the set index. That index is the adjusted percentage. And from this figure, we can see that in these 30 states, the set index are larger than the original negative percentage, especially in Vermont. It means that if we don't consider the demographic bias, the negativity in these 30 states will be underestimated. Uh, well, in these 21 states, the set, uh, negativity will be uh, under uh, overestimated. The red figure shows the special distribution of uh, state index at the state level. We can see that the Mon Mon Montana, so Wyoming, and the Alaska show just the highest level of negativity, where the Vermont was the most positive state in, uh, among uh, in the United States. It can be explained by the lowest. Uh, cases number and the lowest death number in Vermont. Okay, in a summary, there are three interesting results in this, result, uh, in this research. Firstly, the female of age under or equal to 18 years old. This social group are more vulnerable to suffer negative sentiment toward COVID-19. Secondly, according to the setting that the most negative state toward COVID-19 on Twitter is Wyoming. And finally, the demographic bias of trade is not a significant issue for public sentiment analysis at the national level. However, that bias should be considered if we do the state level analysis. Uh, that's all my presentation and thanks to the support from the Gear Lab and the support from the Texas AM Institute of Data Science. And also, thanks very much for listening. That's all Thank you. Yeah. We have a couple minutes. How did you obtain demographic information from users, gender, and age? Does Twitter provide that? Um, let's go to this side. 
you mean this part right? Yes. Yes, that's a very good question. Because this M3 model, I just applied this uh, uh, conduct model from this paper. And uh, if if you want to go um, know the details of this model, feel yeah. free to uh, see this paper. I just a brief introduce the process of this model. This model, uh, so input of this model includes the username, the screen name, and uh, the user profile, and uh, also the description of Twitter users to detect the age and the gender. And there are two parts, uh, two main parts in this model. The first part is called a uh, dance net model to uh, detect the gender and the age from the profile image. This is image processing. And another part is use LSTM model to do the natural language processing from the username and the screen name and the description of the Twitter user from this text information. And finally, they give the age and the gender in these categories. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Any other? We might have. Oh, okay, just one more. Yeah, That's I it. think the research is very experienced, uh, is very uh, inspiring and is in terms of how to understanding different age and the gender group are experiencing different sentiment uh, during the COVID. But I was wondering, have you ever think about to acknowledge the diversity of uh, people's sexuality and also their age in your research? Let's say, um, for example, in your work, you only recognize people who are male and female, and also you using a binary uh, model to understanding the negative and positive. Do you think about the diversity of people's emotion and also their demographic features? In the, such as the, uh, the fear or the different type of emotion? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is another type of sentiment analysis. Um, in the sentiment analysis, there are two main parts. The first part is just to use the a score such as ranging from minus one to one to identify the positive, negative, or neutral. And another part, important part, is what you said. They can detect a different type of emotion, such as I feel very light, I feel fear, I feel anxiety. And this can use another model to detect. And that's, that's also um, my next plan to do this one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I just checked uh, with uh, Yuha, and <laughs> he told me we do have time for one more question. I'm sorry, your hand. So mine's really simple. I just want to know of your half a million samples you took, are those only ones where student where Twitter users had their location information turned on, or is that the total you collected in the added subset? Your question is about the location information of Twitter data, right? That's correct. Oh. Yeah, uh, not all the Twitter data have the location information, and the only 0.04% of Twitter data have location information. But we can get a, a location information from several parts of Twitter data. First part is the a location tag, such as we tweet and the tag that this is right line or this is is red. This is the first part. And the second part we can get from the user uh, user information such as uh, she entered uh, I came from China and the information location information will be China and the second one you can find this location information from the trees content if I mention I'm very happy to be here in the uh, red line and uh, I can recognize the red line is the location information of these trees so there are several uh, sources of location information uh, but the accuracy of this sources are different. So it will depend on what are your analysis and uh, you can pick more of the source as the automation information. Yes. So uh, all the ones you listed samples all have some type of location verification. Yeah, but okay. in my research, I just use the uh, most accurate one, just the uh, tag location information. Yeah. Well, thank you, I know there's uh, interest and there were other questions including myself i do have a question but time is up we do have a little bit more time at the end of the sessions thank you very much <laughs> thank you people